What I'm going to do at the top of this broadcast is to give you a sense of the state of war as it stands this evening in Ukraine. So let me explain the legends on this map first. The white areas you see are areas that have been taken over by the Russian army inside Ukraine. So parts of eastern Ukraine in the southern parts, especially in the north from where the Russian army is marching in. These are parts of Ukraine that have been taken over by uh, the Russian army. Those are the parts marked out in white. The yellow parts of Ukraine are parts which are still held by the Ukrainian army and government and uh, it's in the red stars where fighting is taking place uh, between the Ukrainian army and the Russian army. And remember a lot of people in Ukraine also taking up weapons against the Russian army. They're literally queuing up to get hold of weapons to fight. So the Russian army came in uh, from the sea in Odessa, uh, firing from the skies in Kiev. But even at this moment, the Russian army hasn't been able to take full control of uh, the Ukrainian sky. Uh, Ukrainian fighter aircraft still mobilized their air defense systems, even though they were attacked by the Russians and have greatly been destroyed. Uh, still enough in place to be able to ensure that Ukrainian uh, uh, fighter jets are being able to make sorties. A uh, maximum fighting being seen here in the area of Kiev, where we've seen mechanized formations of the Russian army move in with great speed. Their challenge will be when it comes to trying to hold a city like Kiev, the capital city, densely populated, lots of high-rise buildings there. Can they hold these buildings? That will be the critical question over the next few days. What we're seeing on the ground at this time is a massive David versus Goliath battle. Many international pundits had pondered whether uh, the Ukrainian army would be able to hold off in the wake of this massive Russian assault. Uh, interestingly, many of their weapon systems are from Russia. A lot of their training and tactics are from the former uh, Soviet army. And at this moment, President Zelensky himself leading from the front and the Ukrainian army giving back as best as they can and not allowing the Russians to walk over them. Ukraine, a country under siege, much smaller than the invading force. Ukraine is showing remarkable resilience in the face of a catastrophic attack on its nationality and it's showing from the very bottom. This Ukrainian man is locked in a dramatic face-off with a convoy of heavily armed Russian military vehicles, mesmerizing images of the tank man standing his ground in the face of an extreme threat to his life, an image as you can imagine that has gone immediately and massively viral. Invoking immortal images of the 1989 Chinese Tiananmen Square face-off when a lone civilian stared down a column of tanks during violent suppression of pro-democracy protests. The invasion of Kyiv, Ukraine's capital, by a powerful nuclear-armed and expansionist neighbor. Ukraine facing Armageddon, outgunned, outmanned, but far from outmaneuvered. Ukrainian MP Kira Rudik is herself picking up an automatic weapon, arming herself and pledging to fight for her motherland till the very end. This is the first time I ever picked any weapon. What did you do with the weapon? Are you training to use that weapon right now? You've put out this picture which has inspired a lot of people. What did you do with the weapon? Are you training how to use it now? Yes, I'm training along with my uh, troop. Uh, we are training uh, to be able to use it and to protect ourselves against Russian soldiers. Russians didn't capture a single major city in Ukraine. Another and member of I parliament from Ukraine told Ukraine India today that her aging father in his 70s is also Russian picking up a rifle. Kind of Creek has failed. Just an hour ago, I talked to my dad and he's uh, getting ready to join the territorial defense. So, so people are standing in line to join unlike Russians uh, who are just trying to get out of this. So this is a very different situation for the Ukrainian and Russian army. Audio of a dramatic standoff between Ukrainian forces on a last stand guarding the Snake Island and Russian troops has also emerged as a tale of last stand bravery. 
replying to the Russian warship which tells them to surrender. The defiant and brave Ukrainians are heard saying, go yourself. Even ordinary citizens are arming themselves to take on the invading force. As air raid sirens ring through the skies, Ukrainians are calm and queuing up at military recruitment centers. Led by their resilient president, who refuses to abandon the capital Kyiv, Ukraine claims it has killed over 1,000 Russian soldiers and downed numerous Russian jets and choppers. The fog of war means none of these claims can yet be corroborated. It's an unequal fight between a David and a Goliath, but Ukraine is ready for its last stand against a military behemoth. And these images of heroism, grit, patriotism and pride a lasting testimony. With Gaurav Savant in Ukraine, Bureau Report, India Today. President Zelensky of uh, Ukraine, dialing Prime Minister Modi. Geeta Mohan joins us, a foreign affairs editor. She has the inside track on this conversation. Geeta, uh, we know that Prime Minister Modi expressed anguish over the Russian invasion. Lots of talk globally about uh, India not being part of the UN uh, resolution against this Russian invasion. Give us details about the specifics of the conversation between these two world leaders. Well, uh, the very fact that Zelensky is dialing all world leaders trying to become part of the European Union, asking NATO for membership, and now calling our Prime Minister Narendra Modi is one thing. That is, that the UNSC resolution had three abstentions, uh, Rahul, India, China, and the United Arab Emirates. A uh, very crucial for uh, for uh, Zelensky and Ukrainian administration to have India on board. Why? Because India is an important partner of Russia, and that's why the entire conversation between the two sides was specifically on having India on a Ukraine side at the United Nations Security Council because it does not only talk about uh, uh, the aggression by, uh, by Russia but also action against Russia. Having said that, look at the messaging from the Indian side. They are continuing to maintain that dialogue and negotiation is the only way forward that uh, the Indian administration and Prime Minister Narendra Modi were very, very upset with what's happening. There needs to be a succession of violence. Uh, but beyond that, there was no commitment from the Indian side to really going ahead and uh, pressing that button uh, where when it comes to saying yes and in favor of any UNSC resolution. Russia, Rahul, is a very important and a sensitive partner, stands by India at the very same forum where we see other partner countries when really come up uh, and, and, and put out resolutions, the move resolutions against India. So a very sensitive matter for India. India is trying to show the middle line, but uh, uh, but over here, the West is looking and watching what India is doing. So, a very tough position for India, a very important conversation between the two leaders, uh, but certainly no headway in terms of uh, India changing its stance. Geeta Mohan, thank you for joining us. Uh, former heavyweight boxing champion Whitley Klitschko and his equally famous brother have taken up arms to defend their country, uh, Ukraine, uh, which is under attack right now. Many citizens, in fact, coming out to the support of the Ukrainian army in a bid to do whatever it takes to push back the Russian army. Superstars, global sporting icons, immensely famous and with millions of doting fans worldwide. They once donned boxing gloves to bring laurels to their country and to the world. Now former heavyweight boxing champion Vitaly Klitschko and his equally famous brother are taking up arms to defend their native motherland, Ukraine. I'm calling to all the international partners to observe this strategy that is happening nowadays in Ukraine and this senseless war which is not going to have any winners but losers. Amidst all-out war on their nation unleashed by mighty Russia, the champion boxer and his brother and fellow Hall of Famer Vladimir Klitschko are ready. But mentally, it frustrates you. Vitaly Klitschko has been the mayor of Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, since 2014, and he now says he's ready to fight. 
describing working with police and military to support critical infrastructure and keeping essential supplies like gas, electricity and water running. Друзі, дорогі гіяни, ніч була складною, але російських військ в столиці немає. Ворог намагається прорватися місто, зокрема зі сторони Гостомеля, Житомира. Там агресори знешкоджені. His brother, former heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko, enlisted in Ukraine's reserve army earlier this month, saying that his love for his country compelled him to defend it. We must stay united against this aggression, against Russian aggression. Don't let it happen, continue happening in Ukraine, don't let it happen in Europe and eventually in the world. United we're strong. Support Ukraine. The immensely famous brothers are among countless Ukrainian civilians responding to the call of their motherland to protect, save and battle for honor and freedom. Bureau Report, India Today. Hannah Shales joins us this evening from Odessa, uh, the port city which is under fire. In fact, she reported shelling uh, noises behind her. We've got Dakota Wood joining us from the Heritage Foundation in Washington, D.C. for a perspective from America. Hannah, to you first. Can you describe what you're picking up from Odessa, where you are? Uh, heavy firing being reported uh, in the international press from Odessa. You're on the ground. Give our viewers a sense of what you've been hearing and seeing around you. If possible, in the beginning, I would like to debunk several things that were said uh, previously. First of all, the president of Ukraine is in the country and he's not going to run. Just one hour ago, he was leave uh, uh, talking from his office to the Ukrainians. And just after this, he talked with the uh, uh, prime minister of India and after him with several other leaders. So that's definitely what Russia would like to see. The case that his background is uh, in the entertainment industry doesn't mean anything. Because you demonstrated uh, uh, brothers uh, Klitschko, they are sportsmen, they are strongmen, that's expected. But you can't imagine how many Ukrainian singers and artists joined the territorial defense just uh, in the last uh, few days. So that's definitely the national resistance and neither prime minister nor the president are not going to leave uh, the country. The only who left the country are several members of parliament who were pro-Russian, openly pro-Russian. All other states to uh, protect the country. Also about the Indian national interest and NATO, uh, first of all, NATO never promised and never signed any agreement saying that they would not enlarge because when Germany being united, the Soviet Union didn't collapse. So NATO just couldn't promise. And President Gorbachev told it openly in his interviews that NATO never promised uh, these to him. And uh, India, you need to think that India being one of the biggest Ukrainian trade partners, India receives uh, plenty of uh, grain from Ukraine. We are one of the main suppliers so that can touch uh, uh, Indian uh, food security and not only India but many uh, other countries uh, in Asia and also Ukraine had military contracts with India and even before but Russia is quite a not reliable partner not only in terms of security as you can see in our case but also in terms of even the uh, weapons and arms supply because we already know with several contracts that uh, Russia cannot fulfill uh, for India including several navy ships so now Next time when you think about uh, um, national security interest, think better about them, who can be your real uh, friend. And voting at the Security Council was not about Russia or the United States. You've been voting for the lives of Ukrainian people, of civilians being killed, more than 200 uh, by today's morning. You've been uh, voting for democracy and the freedom of choice, and you've been voting and abstaining in case of the open aggression. For the country who know what does mean war, that was really strange decision. And don't tell me that Indian national interest would be uh, problematic in this uh, way. In Odessa, as for now, the situation is very difficult because we have the groups of saboteurs trying to get from several dimensions we had the attempt of the attack one hour ago by the airplanes but the uh, ukrainian air defense managed to shut down the su-27 that's what confirmed as for now we know that several attempts of the landing operations been happening at the beaches something like uh, 40 kilometers from the city so nothing is confirmed uh, from the landing operations in the city itself what we hear now it is uh, the uh, um, air uh, strikes or better to say the 
terms of the airstrikes. But the assault is happening right now, so we don't know how the situation would be uh, developing. But don't forget that Odessa is the headquarters of Ukrainian Navy. So, and Ukrainian Navy being thrown away from Crimea in 2014 by Russians. So these guys have their personal reasons to fight till the very end. They really um, can't excuse Russians how those behaved in 2014, how they okay. betrayed. So Anna Shilast, we hear you. The government may have its geopolitical considerations, but I'm pretty certain that most people watching you on this broadcast live on India today would clearly condemn the Russian invasion and say that what's happening to the people of Ukraine is totally wrong and this needs to end. So we hear you, we feel for you. Uh, I want to go across uh, to Dakota Wood in Washington DC on how this is likely to play out from here on uh, from a global Western perspective. Given the fact that all the threats that were issued by President Biden and by NATO countries uh, in an attempt to get President Putin to hold off on this invasion didn't work. Has uh, President Biden's stature globally been diminished just a bit more because he had to pull back the American army out of uh, Afghanistan? That cut a very sorry face for America internationally and even here, he hasn't been able to come to the rescue of a country like Ukraine, which was getting closer to the Western Bloc. I, I agree. I mean, this has not been handled well uh, out of Washington, D.C. And if you look at any of the polling information, uh, approval, disapproval of President Biden's handling of many of these issues is very negative. I mean, it, it's uh, in, in the U.S. system, these are uh, all time lows for a, a sitting president. So that is problematic. What is heartening is uh, along the lines of what uh, Edward Lucas was talking about and the uh, reporter there in Odessa has mentioned is that the common people uh, of all these countries are outraged. There are protests in front of Russian embassies and major capitals, even within Russia. Uh, there is an upswelling of support uh, for the Ukrainians and, uh, and against this uh, unprovoked assault uh, by Vladimir Putin. It was singly his decision to do this against the country of Ukraine. So I do think that Western capitals are far behind the public sentiment, you know, that this, these tepid incremental economic sanctions, which are not going to change Vladimir Putin's decision uh, at the moment, uh, are really behind the curve. And I think we need to be much more aggressive. And it is popular opinion and uh, criticisms via the media that I think are starting to force the hands of government leaders here in the United States and in other Western capitals, for instance, in, in Germany and in France and in the United Kingdom. So hopefully this upswelling of support, flowing munitions and anti-platform uh, weapons, uh, anti-air and anti-ground uh, uh, equipment types weapons will really help uh, the Ukrainians to sustain their efforts. So it's uh, it's a, a, an amazing example. And, and as far as governments taking position, you know, there is a moral dimension to this. And uh, for instance, if India uh, was assaulted in some of these contested areas by China, I would think that India would want the support of the United States and Germany and others uh, to say that this unprovoked assault, you know, should be uh, uh, should be resisted in some way. So okay. there is this tension. Yes. Uh, Dakota Wood and Anna Shalest for joining us from Washington DC and from Odessa in Ukraine. Thank you very much. We hope to keep coming back to you uh, over the course of our coverage of this Russian invasion of Ukraine, completely unprovoked invasion uh, by President Putin. I want to go across now to Business Today's senior editor, Abba Bakaya. She was on her way to the World Mobile Congress in Barcelona and was diverted en route to Medkia at the Ukraine-Poland border. So she's currently at the Polish border with Ukraine. Abba, uh, give our viewers a sense of what you've been seeing around you all through the day. Uh, what's the What's the number of people trying to cross over from Ukraine into Poland? What kind of facilities have been made? Can anybody just come in or uh, how are Polish authorities allowing people to come in from Ukraine? Okay, well, the border is completely open on the Polish side, uh, Rahul. The, the blockage or the time lag is actually happening on the Ukraine side. I mentioned this because of one particular instance, which is of a whole group of Indian students who have been frantically trying to reach uh, uh, or, and make communication with the embassy on this side. The embassy has done whatever it can 
but the la the lag is actually from the Ukraine side. That's just one example. Although things seem to be picking up now. Bear with us. Um, Abba is in a place very close to the border with weak telecom signal. We'll have her connected with us again. Uh, but what I want to show you now is life inside a uh, Ukrainian bomb shelter. Uh, while the streets of Kiev were witnessing explosions underground in a bomb shelter, a pregnant woman delivered a baby with basic minimal equipment around. During the night of February 25th, a baby was born in a Kiev subway, which is a temporary bomb shelter. Amid the ongoing air raids as part of Russia's war against Ukraine, people all across the country have been taking shelter in these underground subway stations. We wish this new baby all the best and hopefully he'll live in a world uh, where he doesn't have to deal with the kind of unprovoked violence that Russia has unleashed on the people of Ukraine.